The federal government has once again given another excuse for the continual shutdown of the border, saying that the seizures made and the number of illegal immigrants apprehended by security agents at the country's land borders indicates that the Republic of Benin and Niger are not addressing the issues that led to the border closure in the first place. And I still have my guests in the studio, of course, Shego Shopita and Smart Oluwale, our political analyst. Let's delve into this conversation. I... Two weeks ago, I had um, a young farmer on my show who also produces to export. And he said something really intriguing that this border closure is just going to stifle business, whether we believe it or not. But then there were people I saw on the news who were very excited that they could sell their stuff in Nigeria as opposed to having the market saturated with well, foreign goods and services. But I had one question. How much of the Nigerian people can those little things that we produce in this country feed? I'll start with you, Shego. Well, um, first of all, I mean, come on. This is 2019. In fact, a couple of months, 2020. It's a global village. You cannot be an island to yourself. Not anymore. Maybe we're trying to play the China. Not anymore. The, yeah, the, the I mean, that was, China, that was you know. almost... 100 years ago. You, don't, you can't do that anymore because we're interconnected whether we like it or not. What happens tomorrow in America will hit us hard today in Nigeria and other parts of the world. So closing your border is um, an antiquated strategy. Well, the president doesn't seem to think so. Yeah, he thinks that he's, he, winning he's, he's from. And what he's doing. I think he's still living in the past. You know, I mean, that's the reality. You know, a lot of the things that President Buhari, with all due respect to him, does shows clearly that he's not in touch with the reality of modern, the modern times. I'm trying to understand now, what you mean. Are you trying to tell me that all the people who work in, Mr. P in the presidency, yeah. the intelligent, the smart technocrats, the people who have been to Ivy League schools who mm -hmm. work with the president, mm -hmm. have ill-advised him no, no, on no. this particular one? See, there, there's a problem. There's a problem. There's a problem the border closure is trying to solve. Right? There's a problem of our neighbors refusing to um, um, keep the terms of our agreements, of our trade agreements. That's one problem. There's a problem of our neighbors taking advantage of our inefficiencies to undercut us in terms of revenues. So you have Togo. I understand that the Togo airport and the seaport is one of the most efficient in Africa today. And they've done that specifically because of us, because they're now attracting shipments into their country to then be transshipped across the land borders into Nigeria. Those problems are there. There's a problem of arms, small arms pro pro proliferation, human trafficking, and all that. But is the solution to close your borders? No. Look, how long will you keep these borders closed? They've, it's um, January tw uh, 2020 now. When you open it, it's very instructive what um, Lai Mohammed has said. He says that our neighbors, Benin Republic and Niger in particular, are not uh, playing ball. They're not, they're not, uh, not complying. They're not mm -hmm. complying. Now, I mean, why would they comply? They, it's not in their interest to comply. So do you want to keep the border closed for another six months until they comply? They won't. So for me, it's very simple. The real problem is your customs. The reason any of these things happen Look, I mean, just think about it. The, the whole thing is actually an oxymoron. How can you close your borders to prevent smuggling? Do you smuggle through the borders? Smuggling happens through illegal routes away from the border posts. But you are closing your border, you say, oh, we're smuggling fuel out, um, uh, petroleum products out. We've saved 30% of our daily consumption because of the border closure. We're smuggling rice in and all of that, we're smuggling human trafficking and all that, and you close your borders. But majority of smuggling does not happen through the border posts. Interesting. So the real problem, Mary, I'm sorry, is that the customs officials are compromising and are allowing things that shouldn't pass to pass. So fixed customs, which is obviously a much harder route than to close the borders. So yes, you close the borders, you get some benefits, but as soon as you open it, the benefits disappear until you fix the customs. Before I come to you, Simon, I was visiting Ikotabasi. Um, I didn't realize that that was a port. But you mm -hmm. see, that port is not manned by customs officials. I only saw 
two security mobile policemen. Wow. So it used to be where slaves were taken. Mm. It is a bo whether we like it or not, it is a so that is an angle where things can be smuggled into the country. Mm. And there might be several others. I have said this many times on this show. There's a place, a border between Cross River and Cameroon. Mm -hmm. And you just cross, you can walk over and mm -hmm. drink beer and mm -hmm. come back. So mm -hmm. nobody mans those places. Mm -hmm. And he made an interesting point. If we are leaving the, the, those loopholes where the, these things are happening and then we're closing the major borders where you have security, customs, manning, are we not majoring on the minor or, I mean, really, do we not have mistakes priorities here? Well, um, sometime they said we have well over a thousand on man border, borders. And if we have over a thousand on man borders, <clears throat> you now begin to ask yourself, if we have closed the official route, what of the, the other unofficial routes now? A sister television house did a, um, uh, carried out a report that even up till sometime last week when they were carrying that report, they were still, even though the border has been closed, they were still ferrying rice on motorbike, five bags across, across <laughs> to Nigeria. Now what has happened is, before now it used to be about 600 naira to ferry a bag. It now went into almost about 2,000 naira to mm -hmm. now ferry a bag to Nigeria, and somehow, somehow, this rice gets into the system. In the first place, it's just like saying because, oh, you are doing, you are, you are, you are trading A, he is trading B, and because he's doing better than you, you go and lock him up so that you can, so that you can exempt. Okay, it's, a, well. it's, a, it's, a, it's a wrong approach. What, now, I will give you an analogy. One day, on a Sunday, I just said, let me go and buy frozen chicken. I go to the market. And they said a kilo is about 2,000. I said, for what? A kilo that I used to buy at Suzu amount. <laughs> I said, no way. I went to the person that sells frozen, uh, that sells chicken, live chicken. I said, how much is this? They said, 1,008. I said, okay, you will dress it. How much is that? 200. That's 2,000 naira. I said, okay. I sat down somewhere. And within 30 minutes, they got to trading. And that is more nourished than even the one that has been frozen for God knows when. Number one. Number two, have we consolidated, have we really helped Nigerian businessmen to be competitive? If we say we have rice, if they are saying we have over one point something million rice, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I, I go to Daleko, I go to Ido. These are the two major rice markets in Lagos. You will never see Nigerian rice. How, Before how, now. how so? Before, Before now. now. Now, you now begin to ask, what is the problem? Where was it? <laughs> I, 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 perhaps you will pardon me, I will probably use this because that is only when the Lagos State Government and KB State Government went into a rice production and they call it lake rice. I've gone around, I cannot see lake rice. What stops, and I, 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 perhaps because I want to taste how lake rice is, I went out looking for how to buy to get a bag of rice. Do you know what? I went through a friend that works in the local government that perhaps could help me to get, it took them almost about five weeks to get a bag of 50 kg of rice. That's number one. Number two again, I tasted the rice, it was so good. So good. So what is the problem? If we have had this lake rice, if we had just, all you just need to do is to get the marketing department, go and talk to the people at, go and talk to the Rice Sellers Association in Daleko, that okay, well, every day we probably ship about sozo tons to you every day and we are selling it for 12,000 Naira. Let, the, let your marketing and advertisement department start advertising it, the demerit in lake rice, to the ones that they, brought, that, that they bring in from uh, either New Zealand or, or uh, Vietnam or wherever, Thailand. or Thailand. Let them start advertising it. Over time, we will, we will do away with that. You don't have to close the border because you, want, because you want your business to grow. Let me tell you, when you look at it from the other angle, it is, look, Nigerians are also losing. Go and ask the, the, the transport owners that, 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 that travels from Lagos to Ghana, from Lagos to Togo. Go, go and see. Equally, Nigerian goes to sell their products in Ghana. Nigerian takes their, so they're not telling me to take my product with the, uh, by hair. Where before, those days, 
you can buy it. You can buy a return ticket to Ghana for about 35,000 naira. But now you, you probably get a return ticket to Ghana for almost about 130,000. Double the price. And you now want me to now still carry my goods there? I would rather go by, I would probably go by one of these transport systems that I would pay 9,000 naira. So you're saying that we're losing as we're closing we're also the border? We're also losing. We're also losing. Is it closing the border? It's not. Look, sometimes when they talk, I will see CBN will come up with some sort of figures that they have done this, they have done that. You now begin to, to, to wonder, who have they done it for? They're not doing anything. Because what we should do is, if in the first place, how do we critically engage Nigerian farmers? Look, where you produce. If perhaps to go by the old system, where the Western government, they will give you all the, all, all the necessary uh, uh, support. The moment it is harvest time, they will just say, don't worry, we'll come and buy it off you. Mm. They will buy it off you, and they will be the one to take it to the market. What is wrong in going back to that? Before now, Nigeria, Nigeria, we used to have perhaps one of the commodity uh, 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 a board, yeah. one of the best in, in, in West Africa or Africa. Today, that board does not exist again. It only exists on paper. So you probably begin to look at it that there is a problem in this country. And that problem cannot be fixed by closing the border. No. Shegu, mm. I, I like the angles you guys are coming from, but I'm still trying to get to the core of what we're fighting. Because I'm sure we're not fighting Bene or Niger Republic. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are issues. Is it that we don't have what it takes to follow through in making sure. I mean, I don't know if it's the Ministry of Interior that oversees the Customs Service, but can there not be a hands-on, one eagle eye on these people? Because it looks like they cannot be controlled. The National Assembly has called for the boss to show up severally. He never shows up. So I really don't know. Is it the will to do, to follow through? Or what exactly is it? Um, Nigerian governments generally, not just the federal government, um, the Lagos State government is as guilty of this, um, and governments across board tend to um, evade the more effective but perhaps slower and more painstaking path and try to force their way through issues. They try to legislate and bully their way through, right? The customs problem is the same as the problem we have across the whole of society in Nigeria. There is endemic corruption. But it's the customs is only, you know, this is another problem. The state governments really cannot do anything, can sure. they? Because they have no powers. Yeah, Everything sure. rests on the center. Sure. The customs boss is in Abuja. Absolutely. So they can only make suggestions sure. or appeals. They so, cannot really regulate anything. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that um, as a habit, we don't, we don't um, put in the intellectual rigor required to solve problems, generally. So we try to legislate our way out of things, right? So the problem we have is that our borders are porous. They're not being properly uh, manned. Uh, the trade agreements are not being enforced. The uh, movement of persons agreements are not being enforced. You are supposed to have a passport before you can pass through any border. Mm -hmm. If you are a West African, because you are in ECOWAS, you pass through, but you must show your passport, not an ID card. The thing is that you don't need a visa, but you need to be stamped through. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen. now. What needs to happen is that customs need to be cleaned up. Get a crack, whatever. I've said this time and again, but it, it will take a lot of effort. It will take political will, and they just seem unwilling to take that path. So the easier route, close the border. Just close the border. Don't let anything through, and you know, eventually. But look, when you, I've said this, and God will keep all of us, when they open that border 2020, it will be business as usual. This, all the gains that government, there have been gains. Please, let's not mince words about that. There have been gains. <clears throat> they will fritter away and disappear within two, three months as soon as the borders are reopened. And it will be business as usual because the problem is that the customs is not doing its job. In closing, so is the customs more powerful than the presidency? <laughs> <sighs> You see, sometimes I find it difficult to answer that question because sometimes this is a country where the National Assembly cannot summon a minister or the head of an agency. Well, they have. Uh, or the head, of an agency, and the head of an agency. It is only when they want to. Some will feel that I don't have to, that I have to go and get permission from Mr. President. For goodness sake, you don't need it. 
You don't have to. If not, they, they, they would have wrote your letter of invitation through, the, through Mr. President. But they, they have a right to invite you. So come and tell members of the public. Come and account to them what you're doing. Or perhaps this is what the members of the public are saying about your agency. Come talk to us. Someday will not come. Is it, it is in this country where we saw a custom officer said he is too big to wear the custom uniform. What happened? He did not wear it. Up to today, he did not wear it. He didn't see himself. He said because he has wore a military uniform. And where they have been president, where we have a top, even a, a more senior uh, uh, officer that was made to uh, held in the federal, uh, uh, federal road safety, wearing the federal road safety called uh, uh, this thing, uniform. Who are you to say because you are a colonel or a lieutenant colonel? You said because you have wore a military uniform, you cannot. You see, that shows the fact that, and up to today, not, no, 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 he, 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 he was not reprimanded for what he has done, and up to today, he's still not doing it. He wear captain. No, no law says that because you are a, because, because you are the top this day, you must always be in uniform. But if they said appear in your uniform, what stops you? Well, this tells me one thing: we have a problem. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much for being part of the conversation. We'll take a short break and bring you our plus report. And when we return, I'll give you my take. The Transparency Organization Connected Development, popularly known as CODE, has called on the public to join the war against graft. CODE, while criticizing the effect of corruption on development of public infrastructure and provision of basic amenities for the rural poor in Nigeria, stated the menace of corruption must be tackled headlong. The executive director of CODE, Hamza Lawal, commended Nigerians for taking action to ensure infrastructure meant for their communities are built and completed according to funds released. He added that citizens' actions will also assist in tackling graft. When we started in 2012, we were only able to advocate for and track the release of $5.3 million that was used to save over 1,500 children's lives in Zanfara State, particularly in Bagega. But today we've tracked over $113 million. We've saved over 10 million lives and we've ensured that over 4 million children have gone back to school. Today in the communities that we've worked in, women no longer give birth and die. Their children get vaccinated. So, so for us, we're reducing uh, out-of-school children, we're ensuring that the future of Nigeria is bright, but most importantly, we're also contributing to the fight against corruption. What I tracked is a project that, that was donated by European Union, a healthcare facility. And it, uh, the, the way they started it, it was done in a very substandard way. So I picked interest for that project to be done well, because in that community, they have been over their years of existence without any health care service uh, delivery center. So, and they have been going from place to place to take care of their health. So at that point, I followed up that project and it was duly executed with the facilities and what makes the lives of people in that place to be in a good condition. Project I track in Bra Bra, the contractor actually started, instead of construction of a block of classroom and store, he went and started renovating, he went and started renovating uh, an, uh, an existing classroom in that area. When I came to this site for uh, this thing for tracking, I just asked the, uh, I asked the laborers if they are aware, if they know the name of the contractor. It took them a great uh, deal of time to reveal the name of that contractor. And on inquiring, I discovered that he has gone to the laser, he has gone to laser hash to Saudi. On placing a call to him, he was surprised how I got to even know that it was actually a construction and not a renovation. The youth that we mobilized in that area were there to witness, uh, to supervise the projects. And uh, to tell you that uh, the completion of uh, the project has been very successful. It's time for my take. Now, the border closure is both good and bad. Some rejoice and some are pained. But the presidency says it's to discourage smuggling of rice into the country. But others say, realistically, we're losing billions. The question is, does this stop the smuggling of illegal goods into the country? Or has this just made the smugglers re-strategize? 
Again, Nigerians are still not having it on the social media regulation bill. Now, the man behind it has been indicted by the EFCC. This revelation is leaving critics of the senator more concerned about the bill and if the intentions behind it were really sincere. So I ask, these two bills that seem like gag orders, are they the biggest problems that need solutions in this country as we speak? We have insecurity, we have displaced people, an ailing economy, bad infrastructure, horrible health care and poor education. Yet, this is what our lawmakers are prioritizing. So I ask, which way? Nigeria. I am Mary Anacom and it's been Plus Politics.